Potter's journal, winter's icy grip is letting up. It feels like we're in Florida. Let's see what's in the kiln today. Okay, and before we get to the kiln opening, a get well wish to Eddie's pottery. His little green jug is always looking down over my shoulder when I'm working here at the wheel. Um, speaking of green, okay, it is an American St. Patrick's Day. I should have thought of some kind of project to um, do for that. I know a lot of slipware potters um, impress leaves into clay and then pull it off. Um, I, I, I did that very quickly, but that would be nice maybe on a ceramic towel. It would be nice on the side of a mug. If only I had thought ahead for this. I don't know what we could do, but um, we'll just have to think it out for next year. Let's see. Get to that kiln opening now. Oh, you know, maybe I should have made some Irish soda bread. That would have been an idea. Okay, let's see what's in the kiln today. And you know, here we've got it. Just like you'd cut the cross in the top of that Irish soda bread. We've got that right here. Okay, and look at that. We have got the green. Okay, and my study of English slipware. How could I not come to the pension, the large wash bowls? Well, these aren't large. I finally came to the conclusion, how could I ever sell a big thing like that? And there is something about the shape and the form that I just couldn't pass up on making. Okay, I'm trying uh, to um, here do an exploration of exactly how I like the slip uh, put down and the decoration. Also, um, they were generally left or often only glazed on the inside so they could be stacked lip to lip or I think maybe in um, oh uh, yeah inside of <laughs> how come I can't come up with the uh, refractory that you would stack them in but um, um, yeah trying to determine if they're not glazed on the outside where exactly the glaze should come to and um, yeah knowing that my market that have to be glazed on the lip so I, I think I tried one glaze to here, but I then cleaned it off back up to there because the proportions just didn't look right. And I really like this, I think, better without the glaze and without the extra decoration on the outside. Okay, so I think I did these all different. Um, often, yeah, this I think gives the impression of if they, the way they would have been traditionally glazed just on the inside by doing the slip that way. So, um, yeah, I think I, you know, I, I, when I was glazing these, I had determined which proportions I like. You know what? I think I like this. Uh, I was going to say I can't decide what proportions I like best now. But I had when I was glazing them, and I think it's this right here. It's the entire inside slipped, and then the wavy line, and and actually I think this one too I might like if it was left unglazed on the outside, and then the lip glaze that um, you know for modern kitchen uh, makes it more functional without. Um, you know, having them glazed, and then the outside with the raw clay. Okay, and a signature and a stamp. We, I think, talked about that in a recent video. All right, and these were made, these were made a full year ago, um, and have been sitting around here. I don't know what took so long, um, and they fit real nice in with um, little bowls like this. And more of my shots, Pittsburgh, and the ones with the little skulls. Okay, we'll see what's further down in here. Maybe more glazing of the green. And this was really tight. We'll get these two out that aren't green today. We did, oh, we did the blues video last fall, so we'll get them out real fast. But um, um, I, these are... These also were here from last fall, the chip and dip plates. I, when I do a big run, I leave some unglazed 
so I can then glaze them in the color that sells best. But this is really the only glaze I have that's been working with the white slip. So they've sat around here till now. Um, and okay, and oh, my um, rooster. I really, I've been doing this graffito wear lately, but there is something I like about the combing just with the fingers through the wet slip, the immediacy of it compared to having to slowly scratch away, and the liquid fluid look that you get from it. There is something I like about this. And I wasn't thinking today, how about this Irish pub cooking? There is an Irish cream whiskey cheesecake in here. When I made this, everybody thought it was great. And this being a pie plate channel, it would have been my chance to show. You don't have to do a cheesecake in a springform pan. They're really great in these things. Okay, and pots expand before they shrink in the firing. These just barely fit, but they didn't touch each other or the side of the kiln. Now, if the kiln wasn't, um, the shelf wasn't clean, I guess they could have grabbed something and it could have pulled them into each other. Also, I usually have these three stilts, so somewhere these don't line up with down below or above. I had to put an extra stilt in here, but we got it all in. And it's also why I always like to have, and I just made a dozen of these little garlic grater oil dipping plates um, um, so that I have them at all times. I don't fire them all at once. Since I do so many pie plates, there's always spots for things like that to fit in. And once again, these towels, I think, have been sitting around here a long time. I have actually forgot to glaze them. Um, the towel actually might have been a nice place to put um, one of this shamrock um, plates. So there's an idea you've got. You can beat me to it. And, um, I am real pleased with these. I wish... <laughs> Once again, okay, back to the blues. Um, I'm these have sat around unglazed because I've had to, I've sold and had to remake the blues pots. Uh, but the greens have been here a while, uh, just waiting to be glazed and sold. Uh, this is a glaze. This is a base is a commercial glaze that I've changed up a bit. Okay. I'm going to let this cool down a bit before we get to the next. Uh, we'll enjoy some of that sunny weather outside. This is a day to get outside. Sit back and soak in some sun. You know, probably a time to do a Potter's Journal book review. And the question is, are you a Rogers? Or are you a Brit? Okay, stop back for another Potter's Journal book review. And you know, not really a fair comparison. They are two different books for two different reasons. As you can see, I have them both. And as you can see, I got lazy. I could have got twice as many of these shots in here. So, um, okay, I was getting lazy. It was late at night. I wanted to get Okay, I wanted to get the glazing of the green done for St. Patrick's Day. And you know, this here, I probably could have fired this over here and got a couple more of the little garlic grater plates in there. And you know, oh, you know, this is a big chip and dip plate. Oh, wow. And I just wish... <laughs> No wonder I was singing the blues in the blues video <laughs> where everything came out blue. This is really beautiful. I would be happy doing this all the time. Maybe this is why I haven't read either of those books much because I've found something I have like and I'm using it. Um, this is where, okay, here we go. Here's that... Um, Oh, um, here's that shamrocky thing that I guess I could have, um, oh, then maybe I'd sell these if I, uh, pressed that in there. And then I wonder if you could brush the slip over rather than dip it. 
put those all the way around, then maybe I could sell. Okay, the pots with the green. And here we go back to my blues video. I am still singing the blues with the greens video because I think I've still got one <laughs> like this. Um, but um, yeah, back to the um, um, the Rogers and the ash glaze. In the end, I decided it wasn't necessarily the ash that I liked, but it was the way the pots in the book um, had these little lines in here that would... Um, collect the pulled glaze and the lay it would um lay you know lighter around there and deeper in the in the folds um and this one is is not bad i was hoping for a little bit more maybe but um yeah <laughs> so maybe i'll have to use one of these i think there's another one around yet somewhere okay for myself that's a fairly good size um oh um berry colander a um, couple of tea bowls here okay this is something i just did as an experiment the you know little grooves cut out the cheese cutter thing and i think the glaze needed to be thicker to show that off a little bit more oh the way it did down here on the bottom with the ring and with the stamp huh well, I guess they're a little... Actually, the bottom isn't any deeper. I was really hoping that would have shown off a bit. Like we see with the rings. And I don't ever put intentionally fake... Um, okay, swirls in the bottom. The way some people do. It either happens or it doesn't. And I'm surprised actually to see them there. Since I don't put them in. Oh... And you know what? These have been sitting around a while. I updated my slip, white slip that's underneath here. And this is the old white slip. And this is why I updated it. Because occasionally it was bubbling up and off that way. And it was just um, an old casting slip I that from a hobby potter um, the, who lived nearby. Who, um, yeah, the... They uh, were just getting rid of uh, pieces that weren't fired. And I said, well, I'm not going to fire them. I just broke them up. And occasionally I did some casting. But, um, okay. <laughs> it's really nice. It, it has the sea mist on the inside. And it came down over the green glaze out here to somewhere above the slip. Um, <laughs> this is not going to see the trash, but... Okay, it's not something I can sell either. Um, and the only other thing left is... Um, okay, once again, I <laughs> haven't sold the last of the green ones yet, but I'm still singing the blues. Okay, because... And, and yeah, this is what I was noticing in the... Um, oh, the Rogers book. You know, once again, that um, where I, I do... When I do the um, handle... I put a little groove down the center of it and then I take a little tool and do that little wavy thing and, and this is what I was really liking in the Rogers book not necessarily the fact that they were glazed with ash but the way the pots had so much of this kind of thing in it in the book and that you could do that okay in an electric kiln I wasn't thinking. Potter's Journal, beer review. Now, would it have to be Guinness for St. Patrick's Day? What about this? Brew Dog. It is a chocolate stout. Okay, they're from Scotland. Is that close enough? Um, I think we're going to enjoy the sunshine today, a spring day like this, but it will it is sad for me to see winter come to an end. Um, you know, the quiet days tucked away in the studio, not having to worry about anything else. Um, so it's always sad to see the snow go, but you know, I will chase it down in the mountains with the snowboard soon. <laughs> we'll go outside though and enjoy the spring weather here. If this keeps up, I will have to head to the big mountains for some snow. Um, stop back and see.
What's going on in the studio next week?